Hi, I'm Tom from Tom Miggot Photography and today I'm going to take you back in time. How far? About 200 years. So fasten your seatbelt and let's go. All right guys, so to talk about this lens, I could not just do it by myself. Although I'm here in the Edinburgh Royal Botanic Garden, which is a fantastic place. Uh, but instead of taking pictures of trees and flowers, I just decided to go for something else, something better or someone better. Come over. Some of you may remember, this is Megan. How are you doing, Megan? I'm good, yeah. So it's been, a, it's been a while. Yeah. Yes, yes. So today, pretty exciting, we're going to talk about a lens. Do you know anything about this lens? No, I don't. No. Uh, well, we need to go back about 200 years. Um, in early 19th century, there was this French guy, Louis Daguerre, and he um, revolutionized the whole photography because he made it, um, he was able to actually take photos in a matter of minutes instead of hours. Uh, just to know, at that time, the reason why we didn't have any photo of anyone, we had pictures of trees, of houses and buildings, landscapes, but no people on the photograph is because you needed hours to take a photo and nobody could actually stand for hours and hours. Yeah. So he, through a mistake that he made, he um, discovered a way to actually reduce that exposure time to minutes. And to uh, create that, he created a camera that is called the daguerreotype, but you needed a lens. And at that time, there was a family manufacturing optics uh, in France, and the name of that family was Chevalier. And the son, Charles, uh, was a friend of Daguerre, and he was fascinated by this daguerreotype camera. And eventually, uh, Daguerre actually commissioned him to create a lens. So Charles uh, decided to go for a very simplistic uh, design uh, that is called achromatic lens, or also known as an achromat. And the way it works is basically two um, glass elements in the lens that will um, counteract any aberration that you would have. The, primarily the two aberrations that we're talking about is the spherical aberration, which is something that makes the image blurry. And the other one is the chromatic aberration. And it's also to do with blur, but it's to do with the light and how the, um, the blue light and uh, the red lights are being focused uh, with the lens. And so usually you get some color fringing in some very contrasted places. So that lens was meant to be a great lens of the time. Well, and then you need to move all the way to 2016. A company called Lomography, and if you want more detail about Lomography, I put uh, a lot of information on the, in the blog article as usual, and the link is right here, um, or in the description. And Lomography in 2016, in April, decided to do a crowdfunding, a Kickstarter, uh, for a project to revamp that lens. And uh, unlike the other lens that was meant for the daguerreotype camera, that lens, that new lens, is actually uh, compatible with all cameras. So without further ado, let me show you the lens. Here it is. So it's interesting, the packaging I've got, it was shipped to me in the box. Uh, fantastic, beautiful box with images uh, and a lot of leaflets as well, which is quite nice, showing you not only how to uh, take the photos with it, but also showing you what other photographers have created with such a lens, which I find very insightful um, that you don't have with other lenses usually. So when you open, open the pouch, you'll be surprised. This is the lens. What do you think of it? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh wow, that's the first reaction. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, it's made of brass, and this is the, co the natural color of brass, uh, but it also comes in black. And I must admit, I love this color here, the natural color. I think it adds some vintage yeah. look to it. Um, and because it's made of metal, of brass, it's fairly heavy. You want to hold it? <laughs> see that? That's actually almost 700 grams. So it's only 100 grams short of my 5D Mark IV without the lens and the battery grip. So it's almost as heavy as a camera. Um, 
but it's interesting I love the I love the design and that's the original design it was exactly done this way um, and there's a few engravings on the body uh, let's start first with the cap um, here you'll notice there's this um, a horse uh, a race horse and uh, that is actually a reference to um, a Mubrick experiment uh, I think I pronounced correctly there's the detail in the blog article but basically it was uh, in 1878 or 79 when uh, Mubrick tried to prove with the help of cameras that uh, when a horse gallops all the um, feet are not touching the ground and he proved it using um, his experiment with yeah. a bunch of cameras uh, not with this lens right uh, so that was a nice reference uh, of that experiment and we've got here another um, engraving it says daguerreotype acromat because this is an acromat an acromatic lens by chevalier so i just talked to you about and a paris 1839 uh, we also have here at the bottom some engravings uh, about the uh, focus so the focusing system here on this lens is helicoid, and that means that when you focus, uh, the lens will extend uh, or um, retract itself. So the closer you are, so you can see if we bring it here at 0.5, because half a meter is the minimum focusing distance. So when you are at 0.5, you can see the lens is quite tall, but then as you um, focus further, you can see that the lens is actually retracted itself, okay? Uh, here we've got a signature, so Lomography Art Lenses. We also have, here it says, handcrafted in central China. So although Lomography has a history with Russia, uh, this is interesting, it's actually built in China. We also have a serial number here. And most importantly, uh, it tells us something about the lens. So if you remember what I taught you in the past, uh, we have here, it says that it's an aperture, the widest aperture you can get with this lens, it's 2.9, f2.9. And the focal distance of that lens, it's 64 millimeter. Interestingly, what you find here is a lens hood. Uh, and you see it's in metal, that's very unusual. All the lens hood that I've ever come across, they're all in plastic usually. Uh, you can remove it, just like so. And it reveals the filter thread. And you see it's quite tiny comparing to a normal lens. Uh, it's actually a diameter of 40 millimeter 0.5, which makes the filter so small that it's qu quite cheap. Uh, there's a bunch of filters that you can buy on a Lomography store. Um, you have some uh, polarizing filter, so that will be good and removing the glare out of uh, water or um, uh, windows. So that's quite nice. Uh, and reveal some blue uh, from the sky. You also have one that uh, is a neutral density filter. It enables you to have a longer exposure. So when you do water, you can have like the flow of the water. Yeah. Uh, so you reduce by four stops, I think. And then you have some, a bunch of colored filter, like a green, a blue and yellow, I believe, and red. Um, but all the details are in the blog. If I, if I get it wrong, I apologize for that. Uh, and all these, I suspect you can use them to create some fancy color when you take the photos or if you want to do black and white photography, because when you do black and white photography, you can use these filters to reveal uh, different tones in your images uh, mm -hmm. when you shoot in monochrome. So uh, you can place it there and they, I think they are about 10 pounds uh, each. So that's a lot cheaper than mm -hmm. standard one. Another thing that you will notice is here at the back, uh, there is no uh, chip, right? So this is a manual lens, but uh, sometimes you find manual lens with chip uh, and that will help you get a confirmation. So you still make the focus manually, yeah. but you will get a confirmation saying, hey, yeah, you are in focus. On this one, you don't. And we'll see that it's actually uh, quite tricky at the beginning. You, you need quite some practice to get it tack sharp. If you like me, like having sharp pictures some don't mind they go for soft i like to go for sharpness uh, so it's a little bit tricky uh, but look at this glass i mean it's it's so simple and the, the other glass element is just here so all this is just nothing oh, wow. you see so uh it's a very simple design only two pieces of glass in, inside in one grip uh really really simplistic um and um the aperture where are the apertures well there's no diaphragm inside this uh, lens. So we use what's called Waterhouse Apertures. Okay. And it comes here. 
uh, and I love the keychain uh, that they have. It's uh, it was sent to me, but uh, you need to buy it separately. And I think it's a tenner. So 10 pounds or 11 pounds to, to, to get it. And I totally recommend it because it's great. You can carry all your um, apertures and these apertures are quite interesting. Uh, we've got some standard ones um, like this one, for example, uh, you see that's a 5.6. Yeah. Uh, so it starts at 2.9, uh, if I can find it, <laughs> uh, 2.9 is here mm -hmm. and then you go up. So I don't know if you remember all the aperture stops on the scale but it does uh, 2.9 and the next one is actually f4 and then we've got 5.6 we've got f8 we've got f11 and f16 mm -hmm. so these are all the standard ones but we have some creative ones and uh, so we can see here it's got uh, holes in there and it creates a totally different patterns uh, and especially when you have speckles of light in the bokeh it will actually create something interesting. So we've got a different one here and we've got some star as well. So it's, it's quite interesting. So we're going to go through all of them. Uh, I'm, we're going to take some pictures and we're going to, in order to make sure that all the pictures are exactly the same, I'm going to put the camera on the tripod and take uh, all the pictures throughout all these lens, all these apertures. And the way we use them is you basically take your aperture and you put it like so. And that's it. Uh, which means that you will see the result even on the live view of your camera, so you would see it. I started by saying that this camera was compatible with all cameras. Uh, this lens is compatible with all cameras. And it's true, uh, it comes f with um, the mount here for Canon, Sony, uh, for Canon and Nikon and Pentax. And all the others uh, can use an adapter. And because there's no chip, then it doesn't matter. So it's yeah. then compatible with all the cameras out there. Uh, so that's quite exciting. So without further ado, I think it's time for us to go shooting and try this lens, shall we? Yes. All right, let's go. All right, so uh, we here at a tree. Uh, it's actually the spot where usually people get married here at the Botanic Garden. Lovely place for that. Uh, it got a little bit chilly. Uh, the wind starting blowing a little bit. Uh, but we are going to take 10 exposures. It's probably going to be the most boring part of the video. I just want to see exactly the effect that it, the, the apertures will have on this lens. So we are going to have Megan just standing where she is. Um, it's going to take me a while just to set the, uh, the focus properly because I'm going to set it up wide open, uh, 2.9, and, uh, and then I'll just start uh, putting the aperture. So let's go. Um, so I'm using the live view uh, because I'm on a tripod. It makes it very easy uh, to do and not so easy if I had to hold the camera because the camera plus the lens uh, would be about 1.6, 1.7 kilos. So that would be quite a lot to just hang like this. So um, Megan, if you can have your head gently tilted towards, that's perfect, lovely. Uh, and I can already see the result, this is fantastic. So I'm zooming in uh, five times, I'm going six times, 10 times actually, and I'm focusing on, um, I'm using the eyelashes uh, to ensure that I'm sharp. And that seems to, that seems to work. That seems to be good. So taking the first shot and here we go. And that seems to be good. Um, yeah, Instagram is good. So what we notice here, I'm at 2.9. It's wide open. It was difficult to get uh, the focus really. Uh, and we can see that if I zoom in, um, the picture is sharp. The eyelashes, I can see them individually. However, everything is rather soft. It's it's glowy even. We've got a lot of light on Megan's top here and it's glowy. And uh, is that goosebumps that I see? <laughs> All right, but beautiful shot. So now I'm going to introduce the first stop. Interestingly though, um, this is a 2.9 wide aperture lens. However, the first stop is 2.9. So I don't, I'm curious to see the effect that this will have. So I'm just putting it in and we do the same pose, same picture and the exposure. I'm just actually going to check. Does that affect? No, it doesn't affect the reading of uh, the meter reading. So I'll take the shot again. And if I look back and forth, I can see the bokeh has changed slightly. We got a little bit more contrast uh, with the new, um, the new aperture blade. Uh, it's 
it's quite nice. Let's let's move on. So 2.9, going to the next one. It's F4. F4, slide again. And here we go, Megan. Again, same pose. Good. In fact, I'm deleting that one. Okay, good. So we notice already it's less soft than the first shot. We still see the bulkhead at the back. It's still twirling a little bit. Uh, we noticed that on the first shot. Uh, so let's uh, move to the next one. And that's going to be 5.6. Yep, dropped it. And here we go. All right, good. Tilt the head, Megan, a little bit again. Perfect, good. And we go. So the thing that I haven't done though is, yeah, I'm on aperture priority mode, guys. So I don't need to change the uh, the settings all the time. It just changed it uh, for me. So that's just fair enough. If I look at it and I compare this one to the one before, definitely less soft really really tack sharp on uh, the closest eye and even the other one I can see the catch light in Megan's beautiful eyes that we love is blue uh, the hair is really really sharp we start having some glow as we step away from uh, from the face uh, we can see it on the top here start glowing but definitely the bokeh we still have it it's still beautiful at five six uh, but it's not as soft as it was before so next one we're going to go to f8 so let's remove this and go to f8 putting back the 56 here we go same pose megan we tilt a bit perfect you know you're allowed to smile but oh brilliant so lovely i love the colors uh the bokeh is it's diminishing a bit it, it really uh, we can start seeing uh, details in the branches behind uh, but beautiful um, sharp images really on the eyes it's, it's a really nice aperture this f8 here uh, really the detail of Megan's top and still a little bit of blur gently by uh, the elbow so it's it's really really nice I, I, I love this so changing we're going from f8 to f11 uh, and watch out, Megan, because I will ask you what the next stop is after 11. So here we go. Take the 11, put the 8. And now she's just actually thinking, okay, what comes after 11? I, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, all right. Okay. So tilt a little bit. Perfect. Uh, can you have your... Yeah, perfect. That's better. So I know I'm moving Megan a little bit, but I just think that the portrait looks better. I'm just making sure it's tuck sharp, is it? Uh, up, let me see. Still go on the eye. Yeah, tuck sharp. Here we go. I'm at one twentieth of a second. And if I compare the F8 to the F11, the, the background is being revealed uh, much more. And beautiful um, beautiful sharpness again uh, and the elbow is being revealed a little bit more but overall really really nice uh, which one do I prefer I would prefer the f8 obviously f11 uh, we're reducing that uh, softness at the back so I'm taking this Megan and which one I'm going to put next um, I didn't hear that Yes! And Megan did do the workshop with me, so she remember. Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> like a dad. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So I am putting F16. So here we go. And F16, obviously, how many times would you actually do a portrait at F16? I think I've never actually done a portrait at F16. There is a first, and this is today. So you tilt gently your head back and uh, your shoulder backward. Okay, that's brilliant, perfect. And so we are F16. If I compare it to F11, definitely the background, I can see now uh, the almost the individual um, leaves and it's sharp. There's no, there's no, problem there and no it's it's beautiful so we've used the standard 
uh, apertures. Now it's time to see the effect of the creative one. So I'm changing the F16, putting it back in, and I'm going to be using the creative. And the first creative that we have is a 4.5, and it's holes like this. Uh, so let's see what it will create. Oh, already I can see we got some softness because we went from F16 all the way up to 4.5. Did I say 4.5? Yes, 4.5. So it's beautiful. Megan, gentle tilt. Yes, and I'm just making sure the focus now because obviously we reduced the uh, the depth of field. Uh, so let's make sure. Okay, that's perfect. And go. So. What I notice is the, speckle of, the speckles of light that we have uh, of the sky up there. We see the effect. It's a gentle pattern of little, little dots like water drops on it. Uh, we can see also that the grass, this almost like if somebody took a paintbrush and kind of painted it. Um, as far as Megan's face, I don't really see any particular effect that we need to compare with uh, the F4, which I will do in the blog article. I will put the two images next to each other, see the details and really how they compare. But all in all, it's actually quite nice, nice soft to it. So changing this and we're going to go to the next one. And the next one is an F4.8. Um, so I take the F4.8 and here we go. It's the same holes as well, but uh, they're actually more holes and smaller, a uh, bigger group of them. So let's see this, Megan. You tilt your head, your back shoulder as well, a little bit. No, that one. Yeah, that's good. Tilt gently your head. Okay, checking the focus again. Because we are at F8, so no much depth of field there either. Uh, Okay, that seems to be good. And go. So, if I compare, definitely a big change. Uh, we can see in the speckles in the skies, uh, it's, we really see the pattern of that lens. It's just uh, all over the place. I'm looking at Megan's dress, soft as well, but um, it's interesting. It's, it's similar now. It looks like stamps. Instead of brush like we had previously, it looks like a stamp that went onto the backdrop. Um, and on Megan's face, I don't really see the effect of it. Um, really, it seems, it seems quite the same. Um, so let's move on. I'm going to go next to um, a 6.7 and it's a star. Uh, the first star that we have here. So let's replace this by the star. Here we go. Curious to see what we're going to get. So same Megan, gentle tilt. And got to check the focus again. Seems to be good. And Megan never smiles. Megan never smiles. There you go, I saw the teeth. That's much better. Beautiful. So yes, we have this texture in the background. That's very interesting, uh, but can't see anything particular when it comes to Megan's face. It doesn't seem to have, I'm gonna remove the previous one. Here we go. But comparing to, no, that's, it's less sharp as, uh, it's, it's less soft. I would say as the previous one, but because we actually closed down, we went to 6.7 instead of 4.8. Uh, 4, I think it was 4.8. What was it? 4.8, uh, yes. And the last one is also a star, different shape though, and it's 6.3. So I'm actually, I didn't mistake here. Uh, I went at 6.7 uh, first, so let's go 6.3 now. So we're opening a little bit more, not much, and I'm gonna check the, and I can already see the effect, uh, the effect on in the backdrop, it's huge. Uh, so Megan, once you're ready, tilt gently, good. And adjusting the focus, good, perfect. And it's in a box. Wow, the effect is huge. Megan, you can actually come here uh, and see uh, this last one. The effect is dramatic. Do you see the, the background here? Mm -hmm. Look at all this. It's, oh, wow. it's like we've got strays in mm -hmm. all directions and it's interesting. So 
Now that we've seen the effect, I have to think which one I want to use. I'm going to go through each of them um, and I'm going to pick one and we're actually going to walk around and take some beautiful photos of Megan. And this time I'm going to try to do it without the tripod. So we'll see how many I can actually pull off. Uh, I don't know. Uh, because I'm so spoiled. It's got nothing to do with the lens, is I'm just a spoiled boy having a fancy camera, the 5D Mark IV, having usually L lenses, uh, 2.8, uh, with image stabilization, with um, USM, so it's stuck sharp, beautiful images, and now everything is manual, and I'm a bit lost. So, uh, this is what we're going to do, and uh, we see you in a second. All right guys, so uh, we are one day after uh, we shot the first part of this video, simply because the weather turned bad. And also it gave me the opportunity to actually go to Lightroom and look at the photos, those 10 shots uh, that I took uh, in front of you. And I could see really where, um, what my favorite aperture was and where I got the best result, even though I was on a tripod. So um, I'm actually not gonna bother using uh, all the apertures. I My favorite of all for portraits seems to be 5.6. So um, I've actually slided 5.6 here. And with Megan, we actually found this spot. We're still here in the Botanic Garden. And I just wanted to go somewhere under a tree. There are some amazing trees here. And so what I'm gonna be using is those leaves, those branches behind Megan as the backdrop, and it's gonna be quite interesting. But because we are under a tree, it's quite dark, and behind the tree is actually extremely bright. So that's why I needed a fill flash. So uh, what I'm using is just my Yongnyo uh, YN568 EX Mark II. I'm also using the uh, trigger, the Yongnyo 622C, uh, and my uh, controller here, the uh, 622CTX. So in terms of the flash, I'm just putting it at 1 16th power. It's really being used as a fill uh, at the moment. So I'm ISO 100 and I'm actually on aperture priority, believe it or not. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to let Megan go over there um, and you guys are going to see. I'm going to take several shots and we'll see uh, which one works and which one doesn't. So um, Megan, to start with, can I have you uh, turn around back away from me? That's it. And um, if you can kick the hip. Yeah, look at that kick the hip move that's perfect knee inside that's good and if you can put your hair uh on the other side so on the left side no bring yeah the one on the left bring it down that's good like this and i'm gonna have you look down okay uh that's great uh your left hand can you put it on your hip for me that's it uh actually no switch that's perfect that's good for me uh and more towards over there. that's good all right, kick the hip, that's good. And look down for me, that's brilliant. So, one thing I should actually tell you guys, I think this is good, let's say. Yeah, this is, this is brilliant. I'm actually putting a star to remember uh, this one. It's correctly exposed, it's, it's really good. In terms of the sharpness, I think it's, it's actually quite good. It's actually quite good. Um, one thing I should tell you, I, I would strongly advise if you're able to remove the focus points of, you know, to display from the viewfinder, uh, because I found them, I've got 56, I think, focus points in the viewfinder, and that's quite disturbing to be able to actually um, assess the focus um, properly, given it's a manual lens and there's no confirmation. So if you have a feature in your camera to disable the focus point to display in the viewfinder, I suggest you do that, that would be much better. Um, and I'm just gonna move around and seeing. So now, can you actually turn around facing me? Uh, that's good. And yeah, I like the kick. The two feet, can you just um, put one behind with it on the toe? That's, that's good, oh, not, not crossing. That's good. Okay. Knee inside. That's good. Brilliant. That's great. Loving it. Loving it. Beautiful. Really. It's uh, it's really nice. Uh, it is. It is. It is sharp. It's a little bit soft and sharp. So I'm. I'm gonna try to improve this. This is really not easy. I find that I'm struggling. Uh, I'm really struggling at a certain distance. If I'm actually close to Megan right now, I can actually see her eyes much better. So 
it will be easier for me to do the focus like right now that's yeah this is really good over here I can I can see it is sharp it, I could do a better job though up and I think this is even better yes it is so uh, what I suggest we do is uh, we go to a different location with some more colors and see if I can actually use one of the creative uh, apertures. All right, stay tuned. So it's time now to uh, get a conclusion for this lens review. So, Meg, what did you think of um, this lens? Um, I liked how it gave us good photos with a soft touch. Mm. I think soft touch is really uh, the right word here. Um, this lens can be very sharp, but even when it's very sharp, it does have it does have some softness to it. I know it sounds like an oxymoron, but it, it, it's really the case with this lens. Uh, I personally cannot handhold this, um, this lens with a camera and shoot like this uh, when it's wide open. I just can't. Um, because the depth of field is so narrow, because the softness is such that I'm struggling finding the texture, finding when things are in focus and when they're not. Um, I need to step it down to 5.6, f8, that's more manageable. Uh, these are the portraits that I have uh, showed you a few uh, moments ago. Um, so in that case, it works for me. The, the creative apertures are quite interesting and I've taken some uh, landscape shots because in this video we only talked about portraits, but I've used it with landscape shots and you can see them on the, in the blog article. The, uh, the link is in the description and up here. Um, so it's a very versatile lens, but yet it's not for everyone. If, if you're all about sharpness, this is probably not for you. If you are a fast paced shooter, this is definitely not for you. I've tried to use it during a wedding, even a family photo shoot, I brought it and I just could not get any results. Uh, you can't just ask people to just uh, hold the pose. It's just not possible. And here in this video, you'll notice I've actually had Megan against a tree uh, that helped me a lot uh, to make sure that she would not move that much. So it's not, it's not easy, it is a challenge, but if you believe that sharpness is not everything, and I believe it, it might not be, it's just that in the world that we live in, we're so used to higher resolution and sharpness. So it's difficult to, tr to take that transition and go for the soft um, feeling. Um, but it's interesting. Uh, the question is, would I actually buy it? Um, Honestly, I wouldn't, personally, because of the type of portraits that I do, uh, fast pace, uh, I, I wouldn't shoot it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it. Um, too much of a challenge for me, uh, and, uh, but I appreciate there's a lot of people out there uh, that shoot a different style, and, uh, and I think this would work very well. If you used to shoot at 50 millimeter, 1.8 or 1.4 uh, wide open, or even at 85 millimeter, 1.2, uh, wide open then this is going to be uh, great for you uh, but um, I was really pleased to uh, do the review uh, of this lens so I thanks uh, Hannah at Lomography for uh, sending it to me um, it was very interesting uh, and ha almost feels like having a piece of history in my hand um, so now very pleased to uh, to have played with it so let me know in the blog article, uh, in the comment section, tell me what you think. What, what you think of this review? What you think of this lens? Is it something that you would buy? Uh, if yes, why? And if not, why as well? Um, and if you're just watching on uh, YouTube, don't forget, you can get more detail, uh, more pictures of this lens and details about it and about the history in the blog article. So until next time, this is Tom and Meg saying, if you like it, well... Capture it.
That's right. Cheers. Being able to, you know, use. Donk! <laughs> so, conclusion. English. Inglese. Anglais. That's German. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I thought that was a patch. It's not a patch, thank God. No, but this one is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. What did you think of it? Hmm. That says it all. I mean, it's not like we're actually recording, <laughs> are we? Yeah, we are. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. Oh, no, no, it's not you. We're, we're, ju we're just talking rubbish and just <laughs> recording what we're saying. Um. And I can. I would say it's it's soft and it gives you it gives you good results. It gave us good results. With a soft touch to it. To the photos. There you go. Sounds like my hand. <laughs> soft. Get you good pictures. <laughs> Gentle at times. Hard at times. <laughs> Uh, picture, it's... Well, there you go, a good right. picture of a soft hey. touch. <laughs> <laughs> so, until next time, this is Tom and Megan saying, if you like it, well... Capture it. Good. Cheers. <laughs>